So Google Gemini was just released inside NADN, and in this video, we're covering all the major things that you need to know, such as, first of all, the use cases, why this actually <laughs> should matter to you, why you'd wanna use this. Second of all, we're gonna be covering the comparison between ChatGPT up top here, and also Google Gemini, what it brings to the table, what it lacks. Then we're gonna do be going over benchmark analytics for these large language models. And then lastly, we're gonna be talking about exactly how you can set this up inside NADN in a matter of just one to two minutes. With that being said, let's dive into the use cases right away. So the first thing I want to talk about is probably the most exciting, but you could generate videos straight from within Gemini inside NADN. So let's take a look at this. I actually haven't looked at this yet. I just ran this. So let's see how good this actually is. Sweet. I'm going to open this up. Cool. And one thing I want to point out here is that this is actually Gem uh, VO2. This isn't VO3. So even that to me is pretty pretty impressive, obviously not as impressive after, you know, seeing the launch of VO3, but you can also upgrade this as well to later models too. Okay, cool. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you can do from within Google Gemini is you can also analyze these images. So of course you could generate these, maybe publish them on social media or do whatever it is you want with them, but you can also analyze that as well. So let's say for instance, maybe you're a content creator and you want to see how you can improve. You can run this straight through AI and it will give you answers to whatever questions you have. Obviously this is the most generic question in the world that I could have asked what's in the video and it will describe that, but you can really ask any question it is that you want to ask. The next thing that we can do here as well is generate images and we can also analyze these images too. So here's a good example of an image. The only thing I don't like about this is that kind of the contrast between the back and the phone is not perfect it just kind of blends in but I think that this is actually more to do with the prompt than anything else okay cool moving past that we can also analyze these images as well so we can ask it hey based on taking a look at this video or this photo can you tell me exactly what you see in here and it'll say this image shows a smartphone likely an iPhone possibly a 13 or 14 model based on the screen layout and so on and so forth so to actually describe it but of course you don't just have to ask what the video is about you can do whatever it is you want so another example could be on that social media kind of example is you could be like, hey, can you write me a caption for this photo before you go ahead and publish it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever the case may be. Now, the next thing we can do here is we can actually analyze full on PDF files. So for instance, let's say that you have a contract just like this and you have questions about it. Now, all of a sudden you can just upload this document straight into Gemini and ask whatever question it is that you want. So I could be like, hey, can you again, on the train of like, on the, the bandwagon of <laughs> most generic questions possible. Can you tell me what this document's about? And we'll go ahead and say, hey, this is a service agreement slash contract or invoice between a company and yourself. Sweet. So that's pretty cool as well. And then we can also work with audio files too. So let's say for instance, we have this particular audio file here. I'll just play it for a second. Within that time or one project, project whichever comes first, the reason we've done it this way because sweet and so that is a sales call that one of my team members is having with the potential prospect and so what we can do inside gemini is first of all we can analyze the audio so we could ask you know what's again with the most generic questions in the world what's actually going on in this call can you give me a one sentence summary and it'll go ahead and say that this is a sales call between an automation agency and a marketing agency specializing in contractors cool so that's number one and number two is we can just transcribe the whole uh the whole call as well and so it will give you everything that was said in that call just by running it through this one node here. Sweet. So that is essentially Google Gemini in a nutshell. And on top of that, we can also add this into our AI agents using Google Gemini as kind of like the brain, if you will. And then lastly, we can just plug this into a large language model and ask any question that we want <laughs> because we're on the summarization train here. I just asked to summarize like literally a website here. So I'm like saying, hey, can you tell me what this website's about? And it can go ahead in one sentence and say exactly what's going on on that particular website. Now let's compare ChatGPT to Gemini to see what it brings to the table, also what it's lacking. So first of all, with ChatGPT, it cannot generate videos. It can also not analyze videos. And directly, I don't believe you can just automatically analyze a PDF. You typically have to convert the PDF into text and then add that into ChatGPT for it to analyze the information. But with Google Gemini, you can essentially merge these two steps into one. And so with the analyze audio, transcriber recording, you can essentially do this, I believe, inside ChatGPT. And of course, you have access to uh, ChatGPT as the brain of the AI agent as, and, and as well as asking just 
generic questions to the large language model. Now, in terms of what it lacks that ChatGPT has is right now ChatGPT can generate audio messages, which of course is cool. And one other thing that I really, really like about ChatGPT that Google Gemini unfortunately does not have, and I'm not sure if this is a flaw or just something that they don't actually want, but inside messaging, um, you know, a large language model like ChatGPT, the cool thing is, is that you can have three different messages here, okay? You can have a system message, you can have a user message, and you can have an assistant message. So let me just kind of break this down, specifically this assistant message, because this is exactly what Google Gemini does not have access to. And this is one of my favorite things. I use this pretty much every single time. Now with the system message, it's like instructions. So for instance, we could be like summarize this blog post. Okay. We're telling it what to do in the system message. Now with the user message, we're saying this is the blog post that we want you to summarize. So we're passing in the user message, the input or the blog post. And then the assistant message over here is the output, or we're saying or defining how we want the data to be structured when we output that data. So I could be like, structure it as just a text, you know, text field, or I want you to return this as an object. And an object is the backbone of N8N. So for instance, this is what an object looks like inside N8N. We can have like, for instance, a first name, last name, email, message, and service. And so with Google Gemini, the problem is, is let's say we have this generic text block here, okay? And I say, hey, pull out the first name, last name, email, and all this kind of stuff. It can do that, but it can only pull that out inside like a generic text field here. It can't actually turn that directly into JSON output. I tried putting the output content as JSON. This didn't change anything. So we have to add another step in here where we essentially change text into an object to get this text over here into an object like output here. Sweet. And just the last thing I want to compare here between ChatGPT and Google Gemini is the fact that with ChatGPT, you have something called assistance. And so if we were to hit the plus button up top here and type in OpenAI, we have access to both assistance over here and then also this like message a model here. Let me tell you the distinction first. Message a model is like a one-off thing that you're creating. So it might be like, hey, create me a blog post. But if you message this again, it's not going to retain the memory of all the past messages you've sent. So like, for instance, if you come into ChatGPT here, you could have a conversation it will remember all of the past messages and the conversation history. And very similarly, you can achieve the exact same effect with and assistance inside ChatGPT. However, with this being said, this is also pretty much the exact same thing as having an AI agent down here, hooking up your brain or large language model like Google Gemini, and then attaching a memory here so that it remembers past conversations or past messages as well. And so Google Gemini does not have that built out of the box. You can just replace that with an AI agent. Moving on here, what I'd like to do is talk about benchmark statistics. So if we were to take a look at the top performing large language models of the this month, you can see here that Gemini is doing really well in second and third place with Gemini 2.5 flash, as well as Gemini 2.0 flash. So if we open this up, we can see exactly what its strong suits are like translation, trivia, finance, role play, science, and five other categories like academia, technology, legal, marketing, and health. Just keep in mind that of course, these ratings always change over time as new models get upgraded and added in. Finally, in the last couple minutes of this video, I just want to talk about exactly how you can see set Gemini up inside your NADN environment because we do need an API key. Now, right before we talk about the API key, I just want to kind of go over the fact that if you were to add in a module here and you don't actually see Google Gemini over here, it's because you need to update your instance of NADN. So how we do that is by going over to the admin console on the left hand sidebar here, we'll hit that cloud icon. And inside this admin panel, we'll hit, we'll head over to manage. We'll just choose the latest N8N version over here. So you can just upgrade this and then click save down here. This will reboot N8N. It might take you one to two minutes and then you should have Google Gemini appear here for you to be able to officially go ahead and use. Now, just circling back to that API access, 
us. So in order for us to get this API key, we need to head over to this URL over here. I'm going to drop this in the description down below for you guys to copy and paste, but it's aistudio.google.com slash API keys. And so for us to get this, we just need to create an API key. Now, the only problem with this is that you actually need to create a Google Cloud project first. And if you haven't gone ahead and done so yet, you're not going to be able to generate API keys. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create our project. And this is really, really simple. We'll head over to um, Google Cloud Console and it will be the first link inside Google right here. Okay. Now, if you guys are brand new, they might ask you to sign up here. They might ask you for a credit card on a file to be able to create your account just to make sure you know that. And then from within the Google Cloud Console, we'll hit this button up top here and create a new project. I'm just going to call this uh, my project 47803 because that seems like a very fitting name. Just kidding, not at all. Um, <laughs> but we'll see that project being created on the right hand side here. And we got the green check mark. So it's good to go. I just want to confirm that I actually see that here, my project 47803. And from within our AI studio.google.com, we should now have access to that project that we just created. And now we can create the API key. So first of all, I'm just gonna refresh the page. Sometimes this takes like five to 10 seconds for it to come in. We'll hit create API key and search for that particular project that we just created. Does not look like it's here. So I will refresh the page one more time. Click create API key again, and hopefully it's there. Okay, sweet. So we can see it here. We'll click our project, create an API key, which will be added into that project. And that's essentially it. We'll just click copy here and then head back over here, add this in, click save, and we're good to go. We can officially use Google Gemini inside and then just keep in mind that you will be billed if you use a ton of usage in here. I think they do give you some free credits. I could be wrong on that, but if you use this a lot, you may get billed. Uh, with that being said, guys, really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found value in it, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below because it lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you haven't done so already, I'd highly recommend taking a look at the school community that I have. The link will be in the description down below. There is three transformations I want to take you on. Let me explain these in 10 seconds to see maybe this could be the right fit for you. Maybe it's not. The first one is to learn all the tools that you can actually apply to your life and reap the rewards, save time, earn money, all of that kind of stuff. The second transformation is for those of you who already have your own business. I'm going to give you the exact blueprints that allowed me to automate up to 80% of my business and scale that to seven figures. I've definitely been there before where I just felt stuck and I couldn't scale or couldn't grow. And the only two things that got me out of that were of course, hiring talent and also being able to automate the existing work I was doing manually. And the third transformation is for those of you looking to create your own AI automation agency. And I'm going to give you the exact roadmap that's worked for me and also countless other members that have joined the community as well. Well, the goal is to help you find and close deals all within one month or less. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video.